Hello, darlings. Welcome to another Plague Days with Panda. And today we are sitting in our little chair in the living room to have a little story time. I was reading um, the Dictionary of Superstitions. <laughs> and um, I read some pretty crazy stuff and I wanted to share it with you. <laughs> and so I hope you enjoy it. <laughs> Um, first, my favorite one I read <laughs> last night was about magpies. So we're going to learn about magpies. Ahem. The magpie is wildly thought to be unlucky and has evil associations in many cultures. <laughs> According to the biblical story of Noah, it was the one bird that refused to enter the ark, preferring instead to perch on the roof, while another Christian tradition blames the bird for refusing to wear full mourning at Christ's crucifixion. The bird's piebald coloring suggests its perverse nature, which combines the white of the blameless dove and the jet black of the raven, both of which left the ark before the other animals and were thus left unbaptized by the waters of the flood. <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> Popular superstition holds that it's most unlikely to see a single magpie, but less alarming to encounter a pair of them. Particular dread is associated with seeing a lone magpie when setting out on a journey particularly if it's to church. <laughs> so, oh, they would be bad. And the sight of one bird, one of the birds circling a house and croaking is thought to be a portent of death. A lone magpie flying away from the sun is especially ominous, though the threat is removed if the observer quickly hurls something after it with the words, bad luck to the bird that flies winter shins. <laughs> Did you get that? Write it down. <laughs> Cause that's gonna be important. You never know. And I don't want you to be caught unawares yelling the wrong thing at birds. <laughs> I'm just looking out for you guys. Anyway. Other protective measures may be taken on seeing a lone magpie, including bowing to it and wishing it good morning, taking off one's hat to it, or immediately making the sign of the cross. <laughs> Can you imagine that there's just people going around every time they see a magpie, they're like, oh, hello, good morning. <laughs> I mean, I would. <laughs> I'm gonna every even every time. I'll just be like, oh, oh, how do you do? <laughs> In Yorkshire, the procedure is to cross the thumbs and call out, "I cross the magpie. The magpie crosses me. Bad luck to the magpie. Good luck to me." <laughs> braver souls may spit three times over the right shoulder <laughs> or once in the general direction of the bird <laughs> and intone devil devil i defy thee <laughs> i love this so much is this not exciting for you guys <laughs> what is even this oh i love it okay <laughs> One West Country precaution is always to carry an onion in the pocket, as this will counter the bird's baleful influence. <laughs> the people from that county were had stinky pockets. Whew. In Wales, it is said that anyone working in the fields will come to a bad end if a magpie hovers above him, and that in all probability, he will be decapitated. 
It's very specific. <laughs> They're like, no, it, I, it happened to John last week. Fucking watch out. <laughs> he saw a magpie and then he was decapitated. So put two and two together, guys. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Coming across a larger group of magpies, busy chattering away at each other, is also an ill omen, for the birds are probably plotting some evil or another. <laughs> I mean, what else could they possibly be talking about? Several interpretations may be placed on the, on the site of a, a number of magpies. And there are a few different um, verses that are all very similar. But, um, <laughs> they count how many magpies there are, and that however many there are is what it means. I'm sorry. I'll just read it. Okay? <laughs> um, one of the best known is one for sorrow, two for mirth, three for a wedding, four for a birth, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a story never to be told. There's a fuller version recorded in Lancashire in the mid-19th century <laughs> that runs one for anger, two for mirth, three for a wedding, four for a birth, five for rich, six for poor, seven for a bitch, and eight for a whore, nine for a burying, ten for a dance, eleven for England, and twelve for France. <laughs> Oh, this is the best. On a more positive note, <laughs> a single magpie perching on a rooftop is said to be an encouraging sign that the building will never fall down. Um, while a magpie chattering noisily in a tree close to a house is giving notice of the arrival of a stranger. To understand what the bird may be saying, one course of action is to scratch the bird's tongue and pour into the scratch a drop of human blood, which will enable the bird to speak. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> Who's trying that? <laughs> Who's like... Holding down a magpie, like, I gotta scratch your tongue and then pour my blood in it so you can say words. <laughs> Who came up with that? <laughs> They're like, no, totally. This is for real how it works. Oh my goodness. Who? Finally, in contrast to the mixed reputation the bird enjoys in Europe, the Chinese actually consider the magpie a harbinger of good luck and warn that, that dire misfortune will befall anyone who kills it. <coughs> da -da 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 -da. A belief that is shared throughout Europe. Whoever is reckless enough to destroy a magpie is earnestly advised to resist the temptation to eat the bird's brain. <laughs> which will cause madness. You guys, I didn't know any of those things <laughs> before right now. Or before I read this. <laughs> like, that's the best shit I've ever heard. Why magpies, man? I would want to befriend a magpie. So if you see any, you tell them that I'll give them snacks. <laughs> Send them my way. <laughs> oh, anyway. I am now going to read the superstitions surrounding the influenza. <laughs> Let's pay attention. Modern medicine still has trouble dealing with the flu epidemics, and in former times, the imaginations of the superstitious were taxed to the full in trying to find cures for what was all too often a fatal complaint. 
Among the many remedies that were suggested were feeding the patient spoonfuls of holy water, applying to the chest poultices of cow dung or clay chipped from the threshold of the door, wrapping the patient in warm and still bloody sk animal skins, placing a hot brick soaked in vinegar and rubbed with garlic on the patient's chest, and spitting into the fire and burning eggshells and cabbage hearts in the flame. Raw. Several treatments had to be taken orally and demanded a very strong stomach indeed. <laughs> These included concoctions of ferns and chicory root mixed with honey and licorice, a few drops of the blood of a male goat, egg yolks spiced up with a few lice, or, failing that, the urine of a seven-year-old girl, or a little soot. <laughs> and finally, a few fat slugs and dog feces, which would, if desired, be made more palatable by combining them with oysters dissolved in milk and wine. So, if you guys don't social distance and help us flatten the curve, this is what we're giving you <laughs> when you get sick. <laughs> this is the new cure, okay? So unless you want oysters dissolved in milk and wine mixed with slugs and uh, the urine from a seven-year-old girl. <laughs> you better settle down. No, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. Okay. Oof. That's a long one. Where's the one that's short and cute? Oh, we're gonna do. We're gonna have to do more of these. Here's the one for cough. <laughs> to round out our plague day conversations about superstitions. <laughs> okay. One cure for a cough suggested by British superstition is to administer to the patient, surreptitiously, barley water in which three snails have been boiled. Alternatively, plucking a hair from the patient's head and feeding it to a dog with the words, good luck you have, may you be sick and I be salved, <laughs> should successfully transfer the cough from man to beast. <laughs> and now you know, and knowing's half the battle. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Well, that was fun. Um, I hope you enjoyed all those fun little facts about weird stuff. <laughs> and um, I, I hope that you have a pleasant uh, playing day. And um, we'll see you next time on Plank Days with Panda. <laughs> Alright guys, bye!